So what is reality? Reality, what we call reality, what today's science calls reality, comes under the heading of naive realism. Everything that you think, everything that you believe is created by you. Einstein was a naive realist. And I'm not saying this in a derogatory fashion. It's, it, it's, it's a word in the science of philosophy. Hi, my name is Jose and I'm here to inspire you every single day in your career, in your business and in your life. So today we have a lesson from Deepak Chopra, which you'll find amazing. Over to you, Deepak. Also, don't forget, you can sign up to my newsletter where every week you'll get an inspirational newsletter from me, giving you hints and tips on how to live an inspired life. The link is in the description below. Reality is one wholeness. It includes all subjects, all objects, and all modes of knowing. What we have access to is a human mode of knowing. You know, in my book, Metahuman, I talk about the butterfly, the painted lady, who smells the world through her antenna, okay. tastes the world through her feet, sees the world with 30,000 lenses that move like a kaleidoscope, okay. hears the world through her wings. What is reality to that little species? Some insects see the world 360 degrees, okay, because they have these what we call complex eyes, uh, with multiple lenses, um, you can only see within a certain range, but there are insects uh, that can see 360 degrees. So what is reality? Reality, what we call reality, what today's science calls reality, comes under the heading of naive realism. Einstein was a naive realist. And I'm not saying this in a derogatory fashion. It's, it's, it's a word in the science of philosophy. Naive realism means that the physical world exists exactly as perceived by the five human senses. Now, obviously, that's not true. Other species experience the world through different modes of sensory perception. The second aspect of naive realism is that the physical world, as perceived by the five human senses, would exist even if no one was observing it. Well, how do you prove that? And firstly, it's naive because we know that the world is more than what is perceived by the five human senses. So this leads us to a solution, actually, of the hard problem of consciousness, which is get rid of the idea that the world is physical. What we call of the world as physical, even your physical body, is a perceptual activity. And that perceptual activity for you and me is a human perceptual activity through human consciousness, not through bat consciousness, not through mosquito consciousness, not through plant consciousness, which would fit in with panpsychism. But non-dualism says, go beyond that. There is only one consciousness that is differentiating, you know, undifferentiated consciousness differentiating into these different species of consciousness that form a matrix of conscious beings that are collectively projecting this universe. So listening to that, it's in your mind. Everything that you think, everything that you believe is created by you. When Deepak talk about, talked about all the senses that come through us, the five senses, that's all we can sense. Nothing else. So if you think about all the other beings you talked about, they sense it in different ways, so their reality is created. So if we think about this, that means we can create our own lives in the way we want to. We can believe what we want to believe. The only reason that we believe the things that we believe is because of the conditioning you had. Maybe it's in the past when you were a child. Maybe you know it's experience you've had at work. We carry them with us. So if we can think about that, actually, if we think about this brain that we have in our head, we think about it, right? The brain we have in our head, it's in the dark. It's locked inside this skull. And the only way we get, we get, it, we get interpretations through the message, through our eyes, through our touch, through our taste, through our smell. And we create this reality. And it depends on what we think and how we, how we process our emotions that dictate the quality of our lives. You can look at the worst situation and still look for the good. Or you can look at the worst situation and look for the worst things. 
you can decide, you can make a decision over what you want to see, believe. It's incredible when you think about that, isn't it? You think about when you're you know, watching something or something's happening to you which you think's bad. And you look at all the bad. We never look at the good. And that's used to be for me. So when I'm from my depression, if you look at my other videos, that's what I was doing. It's looking through all the, the lens of this is no good, etc. What could I put out that was the good? So since all my inner work, my deep work about how can I look at my life, how can I start to make things better? And you can do this too, because you can start to appreciate the things that are in your life, like you know, having relationships, you know, actually having something to eat, the small things like being in a house. I'm so lucky to have a house and a roof over my head. Yeah, but we don't appreciate them, right? And the other thing that really helped was, you know, since doing Inspiration Nation is you get to know other people's stories, like David Goggins, I've done a video about him, go catch it in the, in the previous videos on YouTube, go back in the catalog, you can see it. And you'll know all the heroes that you, you look up to have had a difficult time. Yeah, all the people you look to, you know, admire, so Simon Scribb as well, you know, he was made homeless, and now look at multi-millionaire. I've got Evan Carmichael, was gonna give on his mess business, came back, we stand a four million pound deal, came back. It's all about how we see things, how we interpret things, and what are the lessons that we can learn. So there's a couple of practices that I do that might really help you. So for me, it's like every day I get my journal out, and every day I write in there, I'm happy, I'm engaged, I'm wealthy, I'm healthy, and it's programming your mind because if you can program your mind, and let's remember, you know, it's all in here, right? It's here. We are in here. You know, our body is just a mechanism to interpret the world. And I know we're getting deep here, but it's important to understand that we can change things. We can decide to change things. And, and if we think about that for a moment, whatever you believe, you found something in the world that you started to believe. So you, if, you, if you know you can believe something, that means you can change the belief anytime you want change it you've got to want to so one of the things I'll do is I'll just think about what beliefs are holding you back you know is it about you know doing a video like this you know I can't do videos uh, my daughter said uh, you know Megnor if you go check her out just type Megnor internet just said I can't write music I can't write songs and so I challenged her I said what do you mean oh, I, I can't do it okay so have you tried have you, have, you, have, you, have you experimented have you had to give it a go she hadn't it was belief, so we talked about the belief. You know, how does it serve you? So think about your belief, how does it serve you? Whatever you're holding on to, you know, I can't perform my job, I can't, I can't make it happen, I can't, you know, I can't influence my team, I can't influence my, my family. You know, think about those beliefs, think about what it does for you. So if you think about, you know, I can't, I know, say, influence my family or influence my daughter or whatever, think about why that serves you. The reason you're saying this is because you don't want to step into uncomfortable. You don't have those difficult conversations maybe you have to have in a respectful way, of course. It gives you that thing of moving away from the things that are difficult, right? We tend to do that. And that's what, why we do it. We repeat the patterns. So everything we do is a pattern of what we've learned through our senses. And when we go back to that Deepak Chopra piece about the senses and, and beliefs and what we believe about the world, it's all changeable. But we think about other animals and how they look at the world. I really thought this was fascinating is that, you know, you look at the painted lady you talked about and how they smell the world for their antennas. So, you know, we have got our five senses. Yes, we've got all these machines that might help us interpret, even though those machines just tell us what we know already or what we know, but they don't give us any more. So science is a little bit behind the curve because there's probably tons more that we don't really know what's going on around us because we haven't invented the machines yet. Or we, you know, our senses are very limited, right? We just don't know what we don't know because we haven't experienced it. We, we just can't pick it up. But think about the creatures that are sensing the world in a different way. And the things they're picking up, they're sensing their whole world in a different way. So the whole world is like you said, it's just a perception. This is all perception. And for me, the film The Matrix is one of the greatest films that I think started me on a journey about thinking about this, that actually everything that I experienced through an electrical impulse that I experience, the eyes, the, the light, the touch. It's just an experience of electrical and I'm interpreting that and, and based on my thoughts and beliefs, I'm creating a world that I see and that's what you're doing. Even this video right now, you might think, what a load of twaddle. That's your belief, right? You might think, this is a load of rubbish. That's your belief. You're deciding that because based on what you 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 are doing. So think about that. You know, if you think it's 
But if you think about, I don't want to impress myself, I don't want to do it, that's a belief. I don't want to do the work. I always want to live this charm, calm life, you know. But we know it's only through difficulty that you get better. So it's just thinking about these things in a bit of a deeper level, getting a journal out like I've done, you know, really reflecting. So another thing I do is meditation, meditating on what I want to do. I get a little bit obsessed about, you know, the thoughts that I think and I want to make things better. How can I be better? How can I help people? How can I serve? And so these are the things that I do. So let's just go back and just rewind this a little bit in terms of how we can start to really make this world interpretation work for us. So number one is programming your mind in the way that you want to. Don't leave it to chance. So what do you want to happen in your life? What do you want to start to look at in different ways? If you're having a hard time, how can you look for the lessons? For me, it was the depression. I said, "You, what are the lessons to learn? Gratitude, you know, things that I could recognise the small, tiny things." And even in my blog this week, you can catch it in the link below. I was talking about the difficult week that I had, and what are the lessons that I can learn from that. You know, I appreciate. So I've been working super late for the last couple of months, and now I can appreciate actually when I get a bit of my evening back that I actually feel well. That's amazing. I appreciate that. Even today, it's beautiful out there. I can appreciate the sun, the warmth of my skin. These are the things. So gratitude and thinking about the things I'll be grateful for and putting those in my journal. And then how I want to be, I'm happy, I'm, I'm enthusiastic, repeating, 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 almost brainwashing my mind into the ways I want it to be because I've brainwashed my mind or we've brainwashed our minds according to the things that we consume, our TVs, the things we watch, you know, the things that we enjoy can influence the, our whole being. So. If you want to change, you've got to start looking at all these things. What are you consuming? What are you thinking about? What are you doing every day that's, that's programming your mind? Because every day you're programming it. And whether you know it or not, it's your subconscious. Everything that you are doing right now, this video is going to your subconscious mind. And you may not be aware of it, right? Because you're missing some things. But your mind records absolutely everything, but you just are not aware of it, right? You're just not aware of it. And what happens is it then comes to the conscious. Only certain things come to the consciousness. And that's why meditation, you discover thoughts that come up. You think, hey, that's not good. How can I change that? How can I change that belief? How can I change that thought? Because the thoughts that you think are only thoughts that only become reality when you act on them, when you start to say things that like, I can't do this and I can't do that. So, number one, journaling. Number two, you know, journaling, you know, how you want to be. Um, go back to that. Um, number two is meditation, sitting quietly and reflecting and just dialing to see what comes up. What are thoughts that come up? Are they negative? If they're negative, you might want to write them down and then start to reprogram them. I mean, I'm just doing it by solid, everyday program, program, program. Um, I don't watch the news. I literally watch it for one second maybe and that's it. I'll get the headlines, gone. Um, I'm really aware of advertising. I'm thinking I want to just do a plug from that so I don't watch too much TV. I'm just trying to, I'm choosing my environment. So number three is choosing your environment. So choosing the things that you want to achieve. So for me, it's like going to YouTube and saying, I want the things that are positive. I want the things that are going to help me grow. I want the things that are going to challenge me to make me a better person, a better version of me. I can show up for you guys in a better way. So I want this video to serve you. So those are the three things I take away. It's your journaling, your meditation, and then looking at your environment. And there you go. A lot there to consume, right? But just remember, this here is interpreting everything. So you can control your mind, you can control your world. I'm going to repeat that. You can control your mind, you can control your world. So let's go. <laughs> so guys, I want you to know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video. I want you to put it in the description below and hashtag it with Inspiration Nation because it's important that you take something away and work on it so you can get to your next level. You know you want more and so to cater for that, we're running coaching services. If you go to inspirationnation.org.uk and you can catch them there and you can fill in the form and then we can have a coach service between you and me or you and Lee and you can get to your next level. It's great you stuck to us till the end of the video. So don't forget, check out all my other videos right over here. I'm sure you'll really enjoy them. Also, don't forget to subscribe because that'll mean a lot to me. And also, don't forget to hit the bell because that will tell you when another video goes live. So you've been watching Inspiration Nation. Keep going, Inspiration Nation, and I'll see you right over there.